So how to get social media marketing clients without any case studies or experience? That's your question and I'm gonna go ahead and answer that for you. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you guys are brand new here, you probably don't know, but I'm running a marketing agency challenge where I'm gonna go from zero to $10,000 per month in my social media marketing agency. Now, I've been doing this for the past four years and I'm not gonna count any of my current clients because it wouldn't make sense. So I'm literally gonna start, I'm starting from zero all the way to $10,000 per month and I'm gonna go ahead and record the journey. The first update for the first week update is actually gonna be released on Saturday of this week. So in two days from now, and so just be aware for that video because I have, I have some updates to give you guys on how the journey is actually going. So I'm super, super excited to go ahead and share that with you guys. Now guys, in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and actually talk about a question that I get asked a lot and I wish I would've known this when I first got started. If you guys are starting a marketing agency, if you guys are working with e-commerce or local businesses and you guys wanna go ahead and get clients without case studies, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys kind of what two different ways on how you guys can actually make this happen. Obviously, we know that case studies are super, super important. We need those case studies in order to actually get clients. But now, I figured out kind of like a way to actually get clients without them actually asking for any case studies. Because I was able to get my, when I first switched over from local lead agency to e-commerce like I last year, I was able to get two to three clients without them asking for any past results or case studies. I know, kind of crazy. I thought they were gonna ask me for case studies or past results, but they didn't. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I actually made that happen and how like I, that actually works. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of businesses are like, oh, you need case studies, you need past results in order to make that happen. Now, the first way to actually make that happen is come from a position of value. When you're emailing somebody, when you're outreaching somebody to people, right, to a business, if you come from a position of value, and they see the video that you send, they see whatever you send that makes you look like a, a expert in the field, they're not gonna question you. They're not gonna question you because if you, for example, if you created a Loom video and you send it over to them and they see, oh wow, this person is super knowledgeable, let me go ahead and email them back because maybe they could actually help me. They already are seeing you as a person from experience. They're already seeing you as an expert in the field. So therefore, they're not gonna question you. They're not gonna ask you for any past case studies. The moment that they usually ask you for case studies is because you lost them along the way. You, they, they don't really trust you just yet. So that's why you wanna go ahead and get them over the trust hump as soon as possible. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is actually by sending them a Loom video. So what I like to do, especially in my Loom videos, I like to actually record the Loom video. And if they're running ads, I like to really break down, hey, we could do this different, we could do this different. You can go ahead and maybe add this audience, go ahead and try to target this, or change the ad copy to this because of this reason, and give them a scaling strategy, give them something that they could really grab and utilize in their business right away in the Loom video. So you wanna make sure that the Loom video that you're creating is so valuable that they can actually grab some of that information, implement it for their business, and actually see results. That's what's gonna make you look like an expert in the field, and they're not gonna question you. They're not gonna ask you for case studies. If you already came from a position of value, they are, you already added value to their life, and they're like, and they're impressed with the knowledge that you have, they're not gonna really ask you for case studies at this point. I know a very famous excuse is the NDA agreement part, which you could also use, but a lot of people, a lot of businesses, they know that, oh, he just, he's just pretty much saying that he doesn't have any experience. So if that does happen, if for example, you get the Loom video, you get an appointment, they ask you for case studies or referrals, and just be honest, be like, hey, to be honest, I don't have any right now. You can say, hey, I worked in a marketing agency um, and I'm not allowed to use the results, but I wouldn't even say that. I would just be straight up and honest, but I know, look, to be honest, I've been studying this for the past year, two years and a half, and I finally decided to actually start my own business, but I do have a guarantee in place 
that if I don't help you achieve certain result, then I'll give you all your money back or I'll continue to work for free until you are satisfied or something like that. Just be straight up and honest with them. You don't want to just go ahead and lie to them either. Like just say, hey, I don't have any case studies. I don't have any experience if they ask. But say I've been studying this for the past two, three years and I actually have a guarantee to back up my work because obviously you guys are taking a risk on me uh, and you guys are betting on me. So I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable and you guys are risk free. If you position it that way, if you let them know, if you let them know exactly how I just told you, they're going to at first appreciate the honesty rather than lying. And second, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, let me go ahead and bet on this kid because people like to bet on the underdog. People like to really bet on the underdog, especially if you have a guarantee backing it up saying, hey, I'll give you your money back if you're not satisfied with my service or hey, I'll continue to work with for you for free if you're not satisfied for my service. They like people like to bet on the underdog and they like to help people. That's our nature. So we want to make sure that we're just honest and straight up with them. The moment that you lie, say, hey, um, I don't have any, um, I have an MDA or whatever it is, they're going to see all through that BS and they're going to call you out on it. And you don't want that. Okay. You want to make sure you're just being straight up and honest with them. This is if you're doing the work and you don't have any case studies. Now, so to resume, like really point number one is you want to make sure that you come from a position of value and be honest with your ideal client. Come from a position of value, really impress them in the call, really impress them in the Loom video that you sent out or the outreach that you sent out, really come from a position of value and impress them. And they're not going to really question you for your expertise. Now, way number two to actually overcome this no experience or no past results or no case studies, you know, obstacle that a lot of people have is partner up with a media buyer that has previous results. This is actually going to give you confidence in the, in the delivering process because you know you have someone in your team that is really, really good at delivering results. So what I would do before actually getting your first client, go ahead and start outreaching to media buyers. Make a post on Facebook saying that you're looking for a media buyer. Make a post on Upwork that you're looking for a media buyer and interview media buyers. Interview media buyers and let them know who you are let them know what your plan is let them know hey look i'm getting appointments right here and then dun, 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 dun. this is we're gonna get appointments so we're gonna get clients now would it be okay if i use your case studies if someone asks and they're gonna be like yeah sure go ahead and use my case study because they know that you're going to go ahead and give them the client when they come on board. So you want to make sure that you, when you bring an media buyer on board, that they actually qualify, that, that, that they actually know exactly what to do and they have previous results, right? If they have previous results, that's a fantastic thing. That's going to help you with your case study problem. That should take it away completely because one of your team members actually has previous results on working with e-commerce businesses and getting them fantastic um, obviously results. And now you do have a case study that you can actually use and send out to, you know, to your, in your outreach and then you can talk about in your outreach, have your media buyer tell you kind of how he got those results. So you know exactly how he got those results, especially when you jump on the calls, you want to make sure you walk them through, Hey, we were able to get this client, um, this business, these type of results, because we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. And that's going to make you look super knowledgeable. That's going to make you sound super knowledgeable. And nobody's going to really question your expertise. If you actually explain how your media buyer got those results. Now that's not lying that those are not your results because they're your team member. They're the ones going to be running the ads. So you want to say, yeah, my team and I, we were able to get this results because that's your team. That's your team. That is your, uh, your media buyer, right? He's going to be working for you. So he's under your team and he's going to be running the uh, ads anyways. So you want to make sure that you say, Hey, yeah, we were able to get these results, blah, 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 blah. And now you have a case study to back up your work. So those are the main two ways to get over that. Hey, I don't have any case studies. How can I get clients? Number one is just come from a position of value, show your expertise, show them that you're an expert. And if they ask, be honest, say, Hey, I don't have any case studies yet, but you know, right now, or I'll give you a guarantee that my work is going to be fantastic and blah, 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 and see if they bet on you. If they don't, then that's fine. Number two is actually get a media buyer that actually has 
previous results that has case studies and you can use those case studies to get yourself clients or, an, or a client, a potential client asks, asks you for some case studies, you can just go ahead and send them the case study that your media buyer has. So guys, thank you so much for watching this short video. Thank you so much for being here right now. I look forward to updating you guys very soon on the challenge. And guys, if you guys are brand new here, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and comment down below what video you want me to do next. So other than that, thank you so much for your time and I'll talk to you guys later.